I believe that political revenge is a terrible way to lead the country. Good policy is made by dealing in fact, setting goals, and taking bold actions. Anyone elected to office has a responsibility to weigh the evidence, then explain their votes. And we must hold them to the standards worthy of their offices. Now remember, in 2004, it was the Democrats who were wringing their hands. George W. Bush had won re-election with a higher popular vote total than in 2000, and he had increased the Republican majorities in the House and the Senate. The first time a president had done that since FDR. Yet the Democrats came back to win the House in 2006, the presidency, the House, and the Senate in 2008. There have been wild swings from one election to the next, and there will be again. So don't go wobbly now. Instead, go boldly forward to explain why you are right, because I believe you are. Congress face to face to save the economy. President Obama is trying to get his way by doing what he does best, campaigning and making speeches about the fiscal cliff. Despite knowing that that deadline was looming, the president never presented a plan until this week. And the reception on Capitol Hill was, to say the least, chilly. Senator McConnell even laughed at the proposal when it was presented to him. Joining me now, Florida Congressman Alan West. Colonel, thanks so much for being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Dana. your reaction when you finally saw what the president was putting on the table? Well, I was in, in complete shock because it really has nothing to do with reality. When you look at the president's proposal to raise $1.6 trillion in new taxes, he wants $50 billion more in stimulus spending. He continues to want to extend the 99 weeks of unemployment uh, benefits, which will be another $30 billion per year. And uh, also, the other thing that was very troubling was that the president wants his own control of raising the debt ceiling. So I don't think we have a president that is serious about getting our debt under control and getting our deficit, which is the federal government spending, under control, especially when you understand that we have FHA in trouble, we have the post office in trouble. We continue to get closer to this incredible fiscal cliff. And I think that the president should take a case study analysis and look at what President Calvin Coolidge did and also what Pre President uh, JFK did, John F. Kennedy, when they went in and they lowered tax rates and you increased revenues, which is exactly what we're talking about. Were you, did you feel like it was a bait and switch from President Obama, from what you had heard about in the campaign, which was light on the details, but that's one of the things I've heard from members of Congress that they thought that, wait a second, that is not at all what you thought was going to happen. Yeah, you're absolutely right. What you see happening right now, Dana, is really the art of politics versus the science of good policy. And I think we need to move away from campaign mode and we need to do the things that are going to stimulate economic growth and wealth expansion, not wealth distribution. When the president continues to be focused on the wealth distribution politic, which is something that President Thomas Jefferson talked against and also Abraham Lincoln, we're heading down the wrong path. And we're going to continue to see greater uh, problems with our economy, more people pushed toward food stamps, more people pushed toward uh, poverty, and our unemployment situation is going to get worse. And uh, we have seen that recently with some of the numbers, the weekly job claims numbers coming out. One of the things that has been a part of this debate, but it really has been something that's been talked about since the Carter administration, is the need to reform entitlements to make sure that, like, for example, Social Security could be set on a path so that it could be available to children and grandchildren who are um, being born today. It seems to me, though, Congressman, that maybe entitlements is not even going to be a part of the discussion, but do you think it should be? Well, it has to be. And it's very troubling, once again, when the president is demanding all of these things as far as the expansion of uh, government and the uh, increase of tax uh, rates. But he's not talking about the true drivers of our debt and our deficits, which is 62 percent on the mandatory spending side. The net interest of our debt, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. We have to do something with Social Security and Medicare, which are heading toward insolvency. We've got to get Americans back to work continuing to extend the payroll tax cut, which is nothing more than the defunding of Social Security. And ever since we started that bad policy of a payroll tax cut, we've seen Social Security run a deficit. And then with uh, Medicare, when you see about the American people paying about, on average, 110 to 115 billion, I mean, million per year, beginning something, uh, 300 million, I'm sorry, 300 
$300,000 of benefits uh, over the mm -hmm. course of their life. We have to do something about this fee-for-service program and get it to a defined benefit. And so we have to reform and protect and preserve those mandatory spending programs. One of the things I think you're best at as one of the communicators of the Republican Party, what do you tell people, though, who feel like they have been promised something, they feel like they've paid into it, and they are worried about what either Republicans or Democrats might do in Congress um, that would put their security in jeopardy? Well, first and foremost, we're not talking about making any change for our current seniors or even those who are about 10 years from going in. But we have to do something for someone like myself who is 51 or else those programs are not going to be there because realize that we're talking about about 10 to 12 more years of solvency between Social Security and Medicare. So we have mm -hmm. to be adults. We have to be leaders and say we have a problem. We have to bring viable solutions to the American people for our future generations. Sir, we're very grateful that you joined us this afternoon. Thank you, Thank you Congressman West. Pleasure. Thank you.